Now we're inside the truck. We're about to finish our vehicle inspection portion of this um, test inside the cab. Uh, this is the in-cab inspection and engine start. In the instructions, or the overview, it simply says um, that we'll conduct or complete the in-cab inspection and engine start. So there's really not a lot of information. It doesn't say anything about doing an air brake test, but this is the time when you want to do your air brake test. Now I have a system that I work with. It's a numbering system and it may work for you. Uh, it helps me to remember the items that I want to inspect uh, by remembering categories, okay? And the numbering system is four, three, two. So you just count down. The four items that I'm going, going to start with on my inspection are safety related items. Um, the, th the three items are going to be items that are located away from the instrument panel and I'll cover each one of those okay uh, and then the third thing which is the number two there's going to be two items I want to do in the process of starting the engine the engine has to run in order to check your gauges on your instrument panel once you finish the 432 everything else on the in-cab inspection except for the air brake test is located right here on your instrument panel all right very easy to just start all the way on the far left and just scan the gauges and the switches and the controls to remind yourself what needs to be tested. So to start out with the number four, the four safety items, we're going to start with the seat belt. So as soon as you get in the truck, you're going to put on your seat belt. You're going to inspect it to make sure it doesn't have any cuts or frays and that it latches and unlatches properly. We're going to check our fire extinguisher. We're required to have a five pound BC. It needs to be securely mounted and fully charged. You may want to also check to make sure that the pin is in place uh, to prevent it from it discharging accidentally. Also I want to make sure that I have a box of reflective triangles, which I do. They're located behind the seat here. And the fourth thing for my safety items are going to be spare fuses. I need to have one for each kind that the truck takes. My fuse panel is on the passenger side located on top of the dashboard. So that takes care of my four items. The three items that are located away from the instrument panel are going to be my, my glass, my, my, my windows, uh, the windshield. I want to make sure that the windshield is not cracked or damaged. There's no uh, stickers that are obstructing my view. Uh, and I'll also check to make sure that the windows go up and down, which they do. Now I'm going to check my mirrors. I'm going to look at my fender mirrors, my west coast mirror, the passenger side mirror, all the convex mirrors to make sure that they're uh, not broken or damaged, not cracked or chipped, and also they're adjusted for me because my intention is to start driving the vehicle and I want my mirrors to be adjusted. That takes care of the three items except for the horn. My air horn and city horn work. So the glass and the windshield and the side glass and the doors, the mirrors and the horn are your three items that are located away from the instrument panel. Now the two items that I want to cover are the two things that we're going to do in preparation to start the truck. The first thing is I'm going to make sure that my ABS light comes on and then goes off when I turn the key on. On this truck, it doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, you simply tell the examiner that it doesn't work. Now I'm going to safe start the truck. In order to safe start the truck, I'm going to push the clutch down. I'm going to make sure that the brakes are set and the transmission is in neutral. And when I crank up the engine, I'm going to watch to make sure I build oil pressure. The oil pressure should come up and it should stabilize. I'm going to be prepared to shut the engine back off if it does not. It goes all the way back to zero. Now it comes up to about 55 pounds of oil pressure 
When I see that, I'm gonna let my foot off the clutch. That took care of all the items four, three, and two. Now I'm gonna inspect my gauge panel. Oil pressure is sitting at 55. My water temperature doesn't register yet. It's a cold engine. As the engine warms up, it'll come up. Uh, I have oil temperature, which doesn't register yet because it's a cold engine, but it will come up as I drive the engine. My voltmeter should read between 12 and 14 and a half volts. I also have a transmission temperature and a, and a turbo gauge. It's a boost gauge. I'm checking my tachometer. My tachometer is at high idle right now. It's sitting at about 850 RPM. I'm going to check my turn signals. Don't forget the items that are located inside this square panel right here. I have a left turn signal, a right turn signal. I have four-way flashers with my lights on. I have a high beam indicator right here. Continuing on, I have my primary and secondary air pressure gauge. Right now, the low air buzzer is going on, but I have almost 50 pounds of air. I have about a half a tank of fuel, and the application air pressure gauge is right there. It just indicates how much pressure you're putting on your service brake. I also have two gauges that register the, the forward and the rear axle oil temperature. I moved my way over to this instrument panel since I'm done here. Over here, I have wipers and I have washer fluid I need to check. And I'm looking at my wipers to make sure that they wipe the fluid off the windshield and that the blades look like they're in good condition. I'm also going to check my defroster to make sure that the air blows up on the windshield. And I'm also checking the heater to make sure that the air blows down in the footwell. And now I continue to sit here and wait for my air pressure to build. The buzzer just went off. I'm going to continue to let the engine run until the air pressure gets to 120 psi. Because the next step for my in-cab is to do the air brake test. I have the same numbering system for the air brake test. I'm going to do four things that set the truck up to do the test. Once I set the truck up to do the test, I have three tests that are required. Once I've completed those three tests, then I have two more tests left to do that are required. The three tests that I'm going to uh, describe are required. If you don't do those three tests 100% accurate, then you'll fail the entire vehicle inspection portion of a CDL test. I'm getting my stopwatch out for the time when I'm ready to test the brakes. Continuing to wait for the air pressure to build. I just heard the governor cut out the air purges at 120 PSI. The gauge registers about 150 to 120. Now I'm going to do the four things that I want to do to set the truck up. The first thing I check is the gauge, the, uh, air, the uh, air tanks are the primary and secondary at 120. Next I'm going to release both brakes. And while I do that, I'm actually filling up the air, the air tanks and I'm charging the, the air system. When I do that, the air pressure actually drops down. I want it to stabilize at about 100 PSI, which it has. Next, I'm gonna put the transmission in a gear. That's gonna hold the truck in place since I just relief, released the brakes. Next, I'm gonna shut the engine off. And I'm gonna turn the key back on. Now that that's the four things that I do to prepare the truck for the air brake test. The first, the first test that I'm going to do of the three tests that are required is going to be an applied test. I'm simply going to press on the brake and I'm going to hold it for one minute and I can't have any more than four PSI air loss in a combination vehicle. 
So I'm going to start the test now. Now my main focus is the pressure gauges. I'm going to stare at those because 4 PSI is such a small amount of air that I don't want to make sure that any air is lost. I'm also going to roll the window down in case I do have an air leak, I can possibly hear it. I'm going to glance at my stopwatch periodically to see where I'm at on the time. So far I have no loss of air. That concludes one minute. That test is a good test. The results are I had no loss of air pressure. The next test is going to be the low air warning buzzer and light. I want to make sure they activate when the air pressure drops from uh, when you're at 60 or above. So in order to bring the air pressure down, I'm going to fan the brakes. I'm going to stop fanning as soon as the low air buzzer and light come on and they stay on continuously. Uh, now it's on continuously and the pressure is around 70. The third test and the third required test is to make sure that both valves set at a prescribed pressure between 20 and 40 or 20 and 45. Uh, if they don't set or activate at those pressures, the vehicle is out of service. So we'll continue to bleed down the brakes. I'm going to watch the valves, make sure you don't reach up and touch them or assist them in any way. They both pop simultaneously and the air pressure is about 25. This gauge is a little lower than that gauge but I'm going to equal them out at about 25. That concludes the three tests that are required. So now that I've fi finished the three required brake tests started the truck, I've built my air pressure back up, I have two tests left to do that are tests that you must do in order to get credit for them on the CDL test. There are additional tests that you can do, but they're optional. So the one that's required is a park brake test. It means I'm going to release the brakes on the trailer, I'm going to put the transmission in a gear, and I'm going to tug on the truck to see if the park brake holds the vehicle in place. I'm going to do that two times just to make sure. Then I'm going to release the brakes. I'm going to drive the truck up to five miles an hour and I'm going to check the service brake to make sure that it stops the truck. In addition, I'm going to release the steering wheel to just check to see if the brakes are in adjustment, whether it pulls the truck left or right. And I also noticed my speedometer came up. I applied the brakes, the brakes work. The truck didn't pull left or right. And that concludes my air brake test. Once again, doing a tug test on the trailer air supply or the Johnson bar is an optional test. It is not required in the state of Colorado. If I hadn't mentioned where I was at, that's where we're at. Well that concludes the vehicle inspection for Colorado. A Class A vehicle, tractor trailer with a fifth wheel and it's the inspection portion. Later on I plan on making videos for the basic skills test and also the, roads, the road skills test. The reason I made this video is I haven't been able to find one that put em any emphasis on the fact that if you have duplicate, exact duplicate items, that you didn't have to have a long, drawn out explanation every single time about the component. I think the examiners have the capability of remembering what you had said at the other location, and if there's any doubt, they can al also stop uh, the test and ask you uh, to reiterate what you had just said at the other location if they'd forgot parts of it. I hope this helps you. Uh, if you want to leave a comment, I'll post an answer. Uh, I may not have uh, mentioned some items. For example, this truck is not equipped with shock absorbers on the trailer, so that was never mentioned simply because they're not there. 
uh, on the test. Uh, if shock absorbers is an item to be tested, it's a free item. So any questions that you may have, I'd be more than happy to answer. Thank you.